Welcome back, beloved. Today's video is titled, What do Yuval Noah Harari and the Mormon Church have in common? The Spirit of Antichrist, which I know is a, a big accusation. But I was putting this together over the last couple of weeks, just in my mind and praying over it. And I, I think it's abundantly clear that false religion, Mormonism, and false philosophy from Yuval Noah, who claims to be an atheist, he's one of the world's most renowned uh, atheist philosophers, um, that they have one thing in common, and it is the spirit of the Antichrist. I think the Bible's pretty clear. There's only a couple verses. I'll break them down for you on what that spirit is, its characteristics, how it manifests itself. Um, if you haven't watched this video, I made a video, Yuval Noah Harari. It actually went pretty viral. Um, it, it was a real-life type of Antichrist. Uh, and, and down here it says this is going to shock you. This is the thumbnail. It's about 10 or 15 videos down by now on my playlists. But if you go and watch it, it'll kind of explain a lot. Um, this man, Yuval, is, you know, has more clout than really pretty much anyone in the world. I mean, he speaks at the United Nations, World Economic Forum. He is, uh, you know, a world-renowned PhD historian, <coughs> philosopher type. And so, I mean, he'll speak in between Obama and Angela Merkel, the president in Germany, Emmanuel Macron, the president in France. He's got, you know, he's, he's up there. He's well-respected on earth. And the stuff he says is really uh, the most blasphemous stuff I've ever heard in my life. I mean, go watch this video. He, he's writing a book. I'm actually reading it right now. Um, Homo Deus. I'm, I'm reading this book. It's already written. Homo means man and Deus means God. It's how mankind's going to upgrade themselves into gods, kind of like Greek gods or like demigods, um, but through technology. And so this video is going to really break down how his false philosophy and, and this false religion, Mormonism, this is the angel Moroni up here, really have the same spirit, and that's because they come from the same father. Uh, I have nothing against Yuval personally, nothing against Mormons personally. This video is really to reach out to the 16 million members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Hang in there with me if you're watching this. I'm going to uh, hashtag it with, with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints with some Mormon hashtags. If you're getting frustrated already, hang in there with me till the end. I want you to see this right in front of your eyes, and then I want to present to you the true gospel of Jesus Christ. But let's start in 1 John chapter 2. John makes it very clear in the New Testament. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you've heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. So I'm not saying either of this is uh, proof the final Antichrist is coming. Um, he says, now many Antichrists, those that are against Christ or stand in the place of Christ, a false Christ, right? Many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. And so it's reasonable to think if there were many then, there are many or even more now since Christianity is far more widespread. 1 John chapter 4 shows us how to identify the spirit of Antichrist. It, it starts with beloved. So it's talking to believers. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. Discernment is not judgment. Okay. Judgment is self-righteous. It's like, I deserve to go to heaven more than you've all know a Harari. No, that's not the truth. I don't deserve heaven more than him. I'm just as worthy of hell as him. God's been gracious to me. I've received faith in Jesus Christ. I've been born again. That doesn't mean I'm worthy. It just means God was good and merciful to me. But I can discern what Yuval is saying. I can test his spirit to see if it is of God by slamming it against scripture, 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 right? Because I know scripture is infallible. And that's not judgment. That's wisdom. That's discernment, which is also a commandment. So is to expose the works of darkness, false religion, false philosophy, anything that's against Christ. That's not judgment. That's just discernment. It's testing the spirits, whether they have, are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. False teachers, false prophets, people who claim to speak wisdom or speak for God. He goes on to say, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. So he's first showing you, hey, here's the truth. Here's how to tell if someone's on your side. And it's very key. And then he'll talk about the spirit of Antichrist. 
When he says Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, he doesn't mean only that Jesus Christ was a human being. Nobody doubts Jesus Christ of Nazareth was a human being. The question is, was he God, right? Was he, is he the Lord, right? So the full humanity of Christ and the full deity have to be backed up. That's what he's saying here. Basically, the incarnation that God manifested himself in the flesh. And so that's what he means when he says Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He, is, he existed eternally as the Son of God. He came in the flesh, right? John 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The Word became flesh, has come in the flesh, became flesh, right? Dwelt among us. God became flesh and dwelt among us, right? So that's how you know that's the Spirit of God. Now, it doesn't mean everyone who affirms that is 100% trusted or 100% true, that's just the truth, right? Consequently, or conversely, this is now the spirit of the Antichrist. Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, either A, saying Jesus Christ was just a spirit or just deity, or B, saying Jesus Christ was only a man or a prophet and not God. That is not of God, and it is the spirit of Antichrist. It's the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. And so if it was in the world 2000 years ago, it's in the world right now. And so the spirit of Antichrist is very easy to follow. Okay, the, it's the Antichrist, the easiest way of thinking of him, he's like the devil in human flesh, right? Like Jesus is God in human flesh. The Antichrist is like the devil in human flesh. That's just a metaphor. I'm not getting into all sorts of weird theology. It's just an easy way to think of him. Like the Antichrist thinks like the devil. So how does the devil think? It, it, I'm going to show you in a second. The devil gives the Antichrist his authority. They're of the same mission. Well, here's how the devil thinks and deceives us. Here is the root of most cults and false religion. And Mormons, I am talking to you. You are involved in a dangerous cult that I'm begging you to get out of. But hang in there with me. This is where it all starts. Genesis chapter 3. When we were tempted to break God's law in the garden, the devil said, God knows in the day you eat of it, eat of the fruit, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Okay. Both Yuval Noah Harari and the Mormon church, I'm going to prove to you through videos and a couple of documents in a second, both are under this deception. They think mankind can be like God, can be God, actually, knowing good and evil. So that is what the devil says to humanity. Isaiah chapter 14, Lucifer is essentially talking, and he says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. The devil is in a rebellion against Almighty God. He seeks to usurp his authority. He has tricked mankind, deceived mankind, and we have joined that rebellion. That's why the Bible describes mankind not as ignorant of God, but in rebellion, hostile towards the one true God. We want to be like the Most High, right? Revelation 13 makes it very clear. Now the beast, that's the Antichrist. Oops, hold on one second here. Yeah, I went too far. Okay. Okay. The Antichrist, yep, down here it talks about, uh, so I'm not going to go over the characteristics of the Antichrist in this verse. I just wanted you to look towards the bottom. It's talking about the Antichrist, but it says the dragon, which is clearly the devil, gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. So the Antichrist has the same theology, has the same mindset and characteristics of the devil. He's tricking humanity. And it says in 2 Thessalonians 2, you can see the work of the Antichrist very specifically. Um, Paul says, let no one deceive you for that day, the day of the Lord, the second coming, will not come unless the falling away comes first. This is apostasy. Those going, claiming true faith in Christ, they are going to fall away. It's a very scary verse. Then the man of sin is revealed the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. That's what the Antichrist will do. He'll exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, and he will sit as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Revelation 13 says, he will open his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name. It will be horrible, demonic, diabolical blasphemy 
Um, listening to Yuval is some of the, the most grotesque blasphemies I've ever heard. I mean, he literally mocks and makes fun of God all the time. And that's not to call him the Antichrist. He is a Antichrist. This spirit of the Antichrist is so clearly in him when you listen to some of those videos. And uh, once again, he makes war with the saints and overcomes them. So he is going to be a brutal dictator and, and a, a blasphemous dictator. But now I want to show you through documents how the Mormon church has a, a very similar theology, the same spirit that Yuval has. And I want to explain what Mormons believe. Now, Christians, I think uh, I don't think we need to know everything about what Mormons believe. But if you're tempted to say they're Christians, you need to know because it's just not the truth. They're in a cult. They need to be saved. They need to be commanded to repent and believe like they need to be preached the true gospel. OK, Mormons believe Jesus is a created being, just a man. OK, actually, what they think is he's the firstborn spirit child. Right. So so some will confirm his humanity. Some will confirm his deity. The bottom line is it's very slippery because false religion is always changing. The bottom line is they say he's a created being. He could not be the eternal God or part of an eternal trinity. He's not eternal, right? Uh, they'll say that Jesus is just one of the many sons of God and that any man on earth can one day become God. That's what they literally teach. I mean, it goes back to Genesis 3 verse 5. You will be like God. That's what the Mormons teach, and they really can't get away from it or hide it because it's in Joseph Smith's Book of Mormon, which is a false teaching, but it's all, you know, their whole religion is based on that guy who unfortunately was a pedophile, very unclean man, uh, really sad that he claimed to be a prophet of God. And, and Mormons, if you're getting, you know, frustrated or angry, I, I'm just trying to tell you the truth here. I mean, he had a 14-year-old wife. This is silliness, Okay. He was not a prophet of God. But let me show you on the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they even have articles. I mean, it's very straightforward, becoming like God. And once again, false teaching always changes because they really just care about power and numbers and growth. So if something offends people enough, they'll kind of reword it. And so Latter-day Saints see all people as children of God. So they embrace universalism. There is no hell. They reject the clear teaching of Scripture. That every person is divine, a beloved spirit, son, or daughter of heavenly parents. They all have seeds of divinity in them, right? They also teach that Joseph Smith learned that God desires that his children receive the same kind of exalted existence of which he partakes. Guys, we have amazing glories as born again children of Jesus Christ. We're in the image of God. We're going to grow more like him. But we are not God and never will be God. It goes on to say in their own thing that uh, they receive the fullness of God's, God's glory and can even be God's and be made equal with him. It's as blasphemous as it gets if you just read scripture. I'm not trying to get you to tithe to my ministry. I don't receive money for my ministry. I just want you to get in scripture and see how atrocious it would say to be. We say we could be equal with God now or at any time in eternity. It's silliness. This is the fifth president of the Mormon church, Lorenzo Snow, famous quote, as man now is, God once was. They actually teach that God the Father was just a man at one point. I mean, it's, it's really weird. They teach that God the Father was a human being and Jesus Christ is a human being. I mean, it's just weird what they believe. It's just weird because it's just a dude that wrote it. Like, there, it's just weird. <laughs> like, a, a, as God is now, man may be. I mean, it's just, it doesn't make any sense biblically. So that is what the Mormon church believes. You can clearly see the spirit that is against Christ. It's saying we can be gods. We can become God. We, we can receive exalted status as, you know, God was, man can be, as God is, man can be. Like, that's, that's not the truth, okay? Th that's what the Antichrist will do one day. He'll be a man claiming to be God. But unlike Jesus, he won't be God. I mean, it's just, I could just say the same thing again and again and again. I'm like a broken record. But now, this is what I find amazing. Now let me show you what Yuval Noah Harari is up to. This man claims to be an atheist. And, and here's what I'm trying to get at. Both Mormons and anyone into Yuval Noah Harari's philosophy, or I, I guess you could call it a religion, honestly, they're both under the same delusion, there is a delusion scripture talks about. They're both under it. Whether you claim to be a genius atheist 
or a false religious Mormon, they're under the same deception. It's sad, but it's so clear if you will just dig into scripture. So Yuval Noah Harari wrote this book. It literally is Homo, Man, Deuce, God. And it's a brief history of tomorrow. It's like where mankind is heading. He's a history PhD, so he writes books about where we were, huge into evolution and false, you know, which is essentially its own false religion, but huge into evolution. And now this is where mankind is going. And he's basically saying through technology, we're going to upgrade ourselves. I'm, I'm reading the book. I'm on chapter four. It's the most blasphemous thing I've ever seen. There's more scripture in this book. You've got to remember Satan twists scripture. The tool of Satan is scripture. He twists it because we know in our conscience that scripture is the truth. Satan can't get around that, so he twists it. There is so much scripture in this book, it would shock you from a man claiming he doesn't believe in God. He's just crafting again and again and again false religion and philosophy that's always against whatever the truth of the word is. It's a really scary book. He talks about things most born-again believers don't even know about. He's talking about Balaam's donkey and all these like detailed things. It's silliness. But within the book, I mean, it's clear that he thinks mankind is becoming like gods. They're going to have technology that gives us eternal life. You're going to upload your brain into a computer. You're going to be omniscient, omnipresent. He says we're going to have divine powers to create even better than God. I mean, it's so clearly the Genesis chapter 3 delusion. I mean, it's, it's and, and yet he claims to be an atheist, right? But it's so clear He's just in rebellion towards God. And so is anybody that believes what he does. He's just in rebellion towards God, trying to gain eternal life without God. It just doesn't work. He doesn't even understand what death is. Death is wages. We earn it with sin. We earn our death. And so very sad stuff. But I want to show you the introduction and then one other crazy clip uh, from this man. Sapiens was about our past how we transformed ourselves from insignificant apes into the rulers of planet Earth. Homo Deus is about the future, how we will try in the 21st century to transform ourselves into gods, how we will try to acquire divine abilities, like the ability to overcome old age and death, and the ability to engineer and create it would be funny if it weren't for the fact that like Barack Obama, Emmanuel Macron, like world leaders love this guy, read his books, praise him. I mean, he he le he sells hundreds of millions of books. So he's not the only one that believes this silliness. Animals and plants and even humans, according to our wishes. We're going to create humans according to our wish. I mean, silly. From Homo sapiens, wise men. We will try to upgrade ourselves into Homo Deus, God-man. Sapiens God, man. was about God-man. It's so, it's foolishness. It's the wisdom of the world. Look at First Corinthians chapter one. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is a remnant on a narrow road. Few are on it. Jesus said, "It is the power of God." For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. This is what God is doing in the world. These people that think they're brilliant or whatever it is. I mean, I, this is how I was before I was born again. I thought I was the smartest man on earth. Uh, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Like, like that's what God is doing. That's one of his missions echoed throughout all of scripture. I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. It will just look like silliness in the end. It is futile. Now I want you to watch this video from you all. You don't have any answer in the Bible what to do when humans are no longer useful to the economy. You need completely new ideologies, completely new religions, and they are likely to emerge from Silicon Valley or from Bangalore and not from uh, uh, the Middle East. And they are likely to, pro to give people visions based on technology. Everything that the old religions promised, uh, happiness and justice and even eternal life, but here on earth with the help of technology and not after death with the help of some supernatural being. It's just absurd if you really listen to what he's saying. He's so clearly in rebellion towards God, 
leading a massive population in that rebellion. Look what Paul finishes writing to the Thessalonians, talking about the Antichrist. This is so important. I want you to see this. It says, The coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan. Remember, Satan gives the lawless one, the Antichrist, his, his power. All power, signs, and lying wonders, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because this is huge. This is it, guys. This is like the most important part of the video. They did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You're not God. He's God. Okay? I know everyone in our human mind, even me, want to look at, like if you read Revelation, you hear about this big bad Antichrist, you want to picture him as evil and everyone else as innocent and oh, he's taking such advantage of them. No, 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 no. He might be the worst of them. But the, nobody's innocent. They're all perpetrators because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. It, it's uh, the unrighteous deception is among those who perish. The only innocent people will be the saints at the time. And, and, and it's, it's sad because you have to understand because of this, for this reason, it says God will send them strong delusion. The Mormon church, Yuval followers, people of this silly. I mean, I hear so many people have anxiety about death that they talk to me about like Elon Musk putting themselves in a sleeve. Uh, they talk to me about all these different technologies where we might be able to live together. Like I've literally had multiple evangelism encounters where someone will start talking about this and I'll look right at them and say, listen, you want eternal life, but you have no idea what death is. Can I explain it to you? And then I get to a full gospel conversation. So, I mean, it's literally so many people crave eternal life. We're not going to get there through, through physical knowledge or medical science. But for this reason, because people reject the truth, they do not receive it. God sends them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. What is the lie? If Jesus is the truth, it's that we're gods. Just like, just like the lie all the way back in Genesis, you will be like God. This was the first lie the devil used. And you're going to see history one day culminate with the Antichrist using this lie to get the world to worship him. And because they reject Jesus, the truth, God sends them a strong delusion and they believe the lie. God is sovereign in all of this, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Let me show you one more clip. Uh, Stephen Furtick, he, he's another very notable false teacher, big into the word of faith movement. There's even massive Christian or quote unquote Christian movements right now that claim like we're little gods, that we, you know, we have this power, we're good, we have this authority. Stephen Furtick, pastor of Elevation Church, essentially teaches the word of faith heresy that humans are little gods. I'm in covenant with God Almighty. I am. I am God Almighty. That's what he was basically about to say. That's literally what he said. I'll replay it. Hold on. I want to say it. Essentially teaches the word of faith heresy that humans are little gods. I'm in covenant with God Almighty. I am God Almighty. I am. Sorry about that. I, I jumped too quickly. That's what happens. You get whipped up in your false teaching and you have the spirit of Antichrist and you're literally screaming out, I am God Almighty. And, and I wouldn't have confidence against Stephen Furtick if I hadn't looked into him. He teaches multiple, multiple anti-biblical, anti-clear common interpretation of the word of God teachings. And then he's up on stage screaming, I am God Almighty. I mean, he never even put out an apology or like any reason for why he said this. He's just... He sees himself as a divine authority and not the word of God as a divine authority. Guys, I have no authority. This is just a YouTube channel. I'm not a pastor. I just love Jesus and the Bible. Uh, the Bible's the authority. That's why you're not looking at my face. You're looking at the Bible. That's um, all I'm trying to get you to do is look at the Bible. That's the authority. Look at Isaiah 44. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, he's talking to Israel, the one who formed you from the womb, I, the Lord, am the maker of all things, stretching out the heavens myself and spreading out the earth all alone. Look at what God does. He doesn't apologize for it. He's the righteous one, causing the omens of boasters to fail, proud, false teachers, false prophets to fail, making fools out of diviners, causing wise men to draw back and turning their knowledge into foolishness. 
Guys, Paul said, if anyone wants to be truly wise, he must become a fool. Take God at his word and study the holy words of God. Devote every fiber of your being to it. The world will call you a fool, but to God, you will be wise. I'm going to finish with one Yuval clip next. It's just a crazy clip. It's actually so crazy. I thought it might be too much. Let me just show you the wisdom of the world. You've got a, a, a guy writing a book saying we can all be gods. You've He's always talking about putting things under our skin. It's the strangest talk from this guy, L- beloved on the world stage. Let me show you this clip, and then let me show you the true gospel. And it's not going to sound as sweet as you're God's, and you're the best person ever, but it's the truth. It's the true gospel from Romans 3. So let me explain that after this. COVID is critical because this is what convinces people to accept, to legitimize total biometric surveillance. Let no good crisis go to waste. That's what this man wants. He just wants power. He just wants to get in, claim peacefulness. And then as soon as these types of people get power, it's just like the Bible says in the end. But even if this isn't the end, when these types of people, you know, rise to power in a power vacuum, you know, the Bible says there's none good but God, right? So as soon as they get power, they, they turn very violent. We want to stop this epidemic we need not just to monitor people, we need to monitor what's happening under their skin. This is all throughout his book. It's literally to stop a flu, we have to put sensors under people's skin. He taught, I mean, it's really kind of silly. This guy's beloved on the world stage, writing a book saying we can all become gods. In his book, he specifically talks about putting chips in our hands, which I know is very conspiracy theory, sounds like the mark of the beast a lot. But like, I don't write the mail, I just deliver it. Like, it's just abundantly clear this guy has the spirit of the Antichrist in him. What we have seen so far, it's corporations and governments collecting data about where we go, who we meet, what movies we watch. The next phase is the surveillance going under our skin. We now seeing mass surveillance systems established even in democratic countries, which previously rejected them. And we also see a change in the nature of surveillance. Previously, surveillance was mainly above the skin. Now it's going under the skin. Governments want to know not just where we go or who we meet. Above all, they want to know what is happening under our skin. What's our body temperature? What's our blood pressure? What what is our medical condition? Now humans are developing even bigger powers than ever before. We are really acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. So let's put things under your skin and we have divine powers of creation and destruction. (laughs) Like you can't make this stuff up. We are really upgrading humans into gods. We are acquiring, for instance, the the power to re-engineer life. I know that in recent years, we saw populist politicians undermining deliberately the trust that people have in important institutions like universities, like respectable media outlets. These populist politicians told people that, say, scientists are this small elite disconnected from the real people. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. Yeah, Jesus being the son of God is fake news. I mean, that's what it, Jesus being the son of God is fake news, but we're all going to become gods and we really want to put stuff under your skin. I mean, it's like he's trying out. It's like he's auditioning for the role. I mean, it's it's silliness. Guys, I want to finish with the true gospel. And I'm, I'm using Romans chapter three uh, because I think it's so key. Listen, it starts with what then are we believers better than they? Not at all. Listen, whether you're a Mormon, a Yuval follower, a false Christian, a Catholic, uh, Muslim, Buddhist, I don't care what you are. I'm not better than you. In fact, in my opinion, I'm probably worse if we were to really add it up. That being said, I am no better than you. However, I might be different in that I might be born again, right? I am born again. I, I have been forgiven by God. And it came when I really understood this gospel in truth. And I'm going to explain this gospel for you, but I'm not better than you. I don't deserve forgiveness more than you. It's a free gift. Here's how you receive it. He goes on to say, we previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. Everyone is under sin as it is written. This is so key. 
There is none righteous, no, not one. There's none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. This is so important. There is not one human being on earth that is seeking God right now unless the Father is literally drawing you to the Son. It's the good shepherd that seeks the lost sheep. Nobody seeks after God on earth. The scripture cannot be broken. You might be looking for hope, you might be looking for health or wealth or something only God can give you. You are not seeking God. If you're not born again right now, you are running as fast as you can away from God. Goes on to say, this is the case of all mankind. We are so far from being God, it's not even funny. It says they've all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. We are worthless. There is none who does good, no, not one. And the number one characteristic of God throughout scripture that's said about God is God is good. But of mankind, God says there's none good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. It's vivid, graphic language. Every time we open our mouth, it's this stench of death coming out. With their tongues, we practice deceit. I did this more than anybody I know. That's why I love the truth now. I was the biggest liar I've ever met. I mean, it's really the truth. Everything I used to speak was a lie. You have no reason to trust me right now. Everything I'm saying, dig into scripture and see that it's there for yourself. This is the truth. The poison of asps is under their lips like a venomous snake. We curse each other. It says our mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. We can say peace, peace as much as we want. We can have these great debates. We can say, oh, if this person was in power, there'd be peace. If this person was in power, there'd be peace. No, no, no. Our feet are swift to shed blood. We love violence. We've totally turned over to it. So this is talking about a depraved humanity goes on to say destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace they have not known. We do not know it. And it finally finishes with this is mankind's problem. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Mankind does not fear God. It does not turn away from evil. Now, this is really key. Paul goes on to say, we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Every human being either A, is under the law or B, was under the law and then be, you know, repented, believed on Jesus and is now under grace. However, at one time or another, every single human being is under the law and the law can't save anyone. This is what judgment day will look like if you die in your sins. It says that every mouth may be stopped. Nobody will be questioning God on judgment day. What about this? What about that? What about this? The law is like the atmosphere. Everyone is underneath it. And it just gives us the knowledge of sin. Don't lie. Don't steal. We're supposed to love God. We're supposed to love our neighbor. We don't do that. We've fallen. And when we hear we've fallen, we want to say in our hearts, yeah, we've fallen, but God is merciful. He'll save everybody. That's not what the Bible says. And you need to pay attention. You need to fear God and pay attention to what the Bible says, okay? Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh, nobody will be justified in his sight, in the sight of God. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That's the whole point. The law is a tutor, it's a teacher to bring you to Christ, to the Messiah. It teaches you you need a sacrifice for sins, and thank God he provided a sacrifice. He sent his own son to die for you. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed. Christ on the cross does not reveal my righteousness or your righteousness or my goodness or your goodness. It reveals the righteousness and the goodness of God apart from the law. It was witnessed by the law and the prophets. Jesus Christ is the only human being in history that fulfilled thousands of prophecies the day he was born. I mean, where he was born, how he'd be born, uh, his character, his nature, the tribe he would be a part of. He, there are hundreds of prophecies. My channel is dedicated to discovering them and explaining them. Uh, Jesus Christ is the only person that was expected in human history. And it says that this righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. 
It is only for those who believe. It goes on to say, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But you can be justified freely. That means that's a courtroom declaration that even though you have all these sins, Christ paid the price. His blood was the price. It says we can be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation. That means an atoning sacrifice. That is a sacrifice that satisfies the wrath of God. If you're not born again, the Bible describes you as in hostility with God. You have a hatred and an enmity towards God, and his wrath abides on you. It calls you a child of wrath. This sacrifice that Jesus has done, this is the only way to bridge that gap and restore that relationship. It satisfies the wrath of God. This is what Jesus did for you. If you want justice, you end up in hell. But if you cry out for mercy, you can have faith in Christ. You have to put your faith in Christ alone, not Christ plus some good works. All our good works are filthy rags, the Bible says. Just Christ alone. He's the only reason I'm going to heaven, and I don't deserve it. It's just a merciful, gracious gift through faith. And he did this to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God passed over the sins that were previously committed. God hates sin. There were just 10 verses where I just told you all of humanity has fallen. God does not look at it lightly. And yet, even in our fallenness, the cursing, the sinfulness, the bitterness, the swift feet to shed blood, all that, while we were enemies of God, he sent his son to die for us. That is beautiful. Imagine dying for your enemies. That's what God did. It says this demonstrates at the present time his righteousness, his goodness, that he might be just. He will punish every sin ever committed in his creation, but he's also the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Every sin will be punished. He's perfectly just. You can pay for them yourself or you can cry out for mercy. Christ paid those sins. Romans chapter four says to him who works, works for your salvation. If you're trying to earn your salvation, Mormons, I know that you don't understand true grace. I know you have three heavens and the first one you can just get into because there's no hell. And then you have to work to get to the exalted state and you got to work to get to the third heaven. Stop working. L listen to the word of God. To him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. You can never pay God back for what we owe him. It's like if you, you owed someone a billion dollars and you made a dollar an hour, the math would never add up. It wouldn't work. But to him who does not work, does not work, but believes on him, Jesus Christ, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. This is the only non-self-righteous faith on planet earth. There's nothing I can do. Islam says, just follow the law. You can be good enough. You're good. You can have your own, you're, you're self-righteous. Like, not like an insult, like, oh, you're self-righteous. Like there's righteousness within yourself. Islam says I can justify you before God. Oh, but he's gracious too. Catholics say, yeah, it's Jesus on the cross, but it's also baptism and these good works and communion, all these things. Uh, so it's, it's Jesus plus something else. Some people say it's Jesus plus baptism. No, no, I'm saying I'm ungodly. I'm an enemy of God but he justified me. He died for me. His blood paid the price for my sins. That's where all my faith is. If you do that, if you repent from your sins, turn away from them and believe on Jesus Christ alone for salvation and believe on Jesus as he truly is, not a part of God, not some of God, all of God dwelt in Christ. Read Colossians. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, fully man and fully God. You believe on the true Christ, you will be born again to eternal life. Uh, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. Have a great day.